Thank you. So I'm going to talk to you about business and how we can actually allow it to thrive. And I've been in business now for about 20 years, running companies, uh, both small and big. And now I sit on corporate boards. And one of the things that I realized is that the organizational construct for how we think about business fundamentally has us focus on making a lot of stuff and being as big as possible in doing that. And if you look at major industries like auto or IT or finance, they're highly focused on that goal. And I think this framework is limited. And so what I want to talk to you about today is sort of expanding that horizon. Now, this morning we've had a lot of conversations that were incredibly practical. And by the way, Sandy, she should be like leading a major company, don't you think? And she's amazing. And, and what IBM's been able to share in terms of research I thought was just incredibly insightful. I'm going to be a little bit more case study, less research uh, focused this morning. So um, what I think that construct leads us to is being big, being the 800-pound gorilla. And all of you know in this room, and, and it was interesting to watch how many specific examples were being shown, that a whole bunch of factors, things you already see, have changed how companies have their cost structure, the actual sort of economics of how they work, which fundamentally changes who can come in and enter your market space. And what I think is happening as a result is the 800-pound gorilla is starting to really think, gosh, you know, I think a little, little trimming up would do right. And so they think the way to be faster and more fluid is simply to go on, effectively, a diet. And I think that's actually the wrong um, framework. And instead, we ought to be thinking about how do we actually get faster, and fluid by the very way in which we work with people. And before I can kind of go there with, with what I think, I just want to do a quick little sort of reset. We almost always, when we use the term social, attach the word media. In fact, Peter, I want to hear how you've managed to actually get people to hear social and think business. Uh, because when I was, even when I was writing something for the Harvard blog recently, I would say like 50% of the commenters couldn't hear what I was saying. Because what they kept doing is finishing the sentence. Like, as soon as you hear social, they link it to this other thing. And social can actually affect everything. Everything. Every single part of the business function, every part of the business model. And um, I want to walk you through a couple examples and then how, just, you know, specifically, and then kind of back into more. So, one is an example of Singularity University. How many of you guys have heard of it? OK. So Singularity University is focused on taking people who have already gone to school, so undergrads or grad students, and figure out how to teach them not backwards-looking information, like everything you should know in order for you to be smart, but forward-looking information, what's going to happen in the next 10 years. It was started by Ray Kurzweil with the idea of we can change the world if we actually prepare our people to go change the world. So when they started their institution, though, and they were thinking, how do we actually run an education institution, they were trying to figure out how not to do it as traditional systems. So I think they give us, uh, just using their own intellectual model, how we might be able to think about organizational design. Most of their business, most of the people who actually deliver their institutional value do not actually work for them. And they deliver 300 hours of curriculum per student with seven full-time staff. The seven full-time staff basically are responsible for the mission and vision. They're responsible for the operating uh, system. And they're responsible for making sure that they know who to recruit. That group recruits 10 do what they call domain leaders, so the best people in medicine and bioscience, et cetera. And the very, very best people that they can find across the world, so they don't think about it also from a regional point of view because they never actually need to interact with them physically. That group of 10 people brings in each 20 domain experts. Seven, 10, 20. So that essentially 80% of the resources delivering the value of the organization is not in the center circle. Now, when I share this example to other organizations, they're like, I could never do that. And I just want to ask the question of, well, what would it take for us to think about that so that there's not an artifice between they work for us, 
and we deliver to them, the customer, but we really try to think about how do we incorporate a bunch of people into how we create value. First example. Second example is one that you might know of a little bit more. So how many of you guys have gone to a TEDx event? Yeah, spoken perhaps. So TED, several years ago, was a venue where a couple thousand people were involved in a pretty small community. Two conferences, a couple thousand people. And they decided they would start publishing their videos online. But then they went the next step further, which is to say people could also create their own event. And they licensed it with this idea of TEDx. You can do whatever, finish out the rest of the X. And uh, you know, it can be TEDx Cabrera, TEDx New York, TEDx London. And in fact, since they launched that, almost three years ago now, 3,000 events have happened with people figuring out what were the ideas close to them that mattered. Because as you might imagine, someone sitting in the slums outside Nairobi are going to have a different set of local issues and ideas worth spreading than someone sitting in Long Beach, California, like Jeff Bezos, different set of issues going through their heads. right? And the thing that Ted was able to do is to unite people through a shared purpose. It wasn't that the TEDxers were interested in supporting TED. There was some halo effect of brand, I'm sure, that they hoped for. But they were interested in figuring out what ideas matter to my community, and then how might I use this platform to share it really broadly. And TED got something in return. By using community instead of using their own dollars, they're able to create scale. The gorilla relied on scale all by themselves. Organizations today can actually figure out how to use scale with many people. 